the date was 2nd april 2011 the entire world the cricket world is watching it very seriously after 28 years india lifts the world cup once again in 2011 yes you all heard right india created history on 2nd of april 2011 now in this chapter history and sport we are going to study about the story of cricket how the game which was in 500 years ago played as a stick and a ball game somewhere in the southern parts of england came to be the passion for tens of millions of people in india drop all their works in the evening to watch a one day international match between india and pakistan so that's what the passion of the indians towards the game so how the game which was born in southern part of england in very small villages today commands a very good passion on the hearts of the indians where 100 billion population stays so it has become a very interesting point to study about the story of cricket here we will also study how was the bat first the bat was first curved at the end because earlier the bowling used to be done under the arms and the batsman gets a chance to get it connected with the under curved shape of the hockey bat like structured stick so later on this got reshaped and we also study how the game which was played initially in the villages today it is played in giant stadiums and in costly cities we also see how the present was made as a main part of history history is nothing but to know how the present was made and it also reveals for us that the sports amuse ourselves we compete with each other and we stay fit by playing one or the other game and express our social liabilities in this we also have some interesting facts which connect us with other important aspects of history that is colonialism nationalism religion and caste all these are also interconnected with the story of cricket first we will discuss how the game of cricket developed in england how it became a famous game or a sport and later we will see how it got spread in india also the 18th and the 19th centuries the sh- they shaped the game and gave it a unique nature for the cricket earlier the game was different as the centuries passed the codification of the game happened and today it has very special features which are rare and unique when compared to the other games for example the game can be played for a maximum of 5 days the test matches but still it ends up as a draw match without any victory given to any of the parties when it compares to the other games like football or baseball the football comes to an end within 1 and 1/2 an hour when it comes to the baseball it is less than that is nearly half a time where the shortest form of cricket that is played the nine innings also comes down very short time that is 3 to 3 and 1/2 hours where the 50 hour shortest period of cricket matches that is one day international matches are taking more than 7 to 8 hours of time and moving on further the rules are like 22 yards is a strict pitch length but the shape of the ground is not yet fixed there is no fixed shape for the ground it is sometimes oval or sometimes closely circular like for example the adelaide ground in sydney uh, adelaide ground in australia sorry and then the chipok stadium in chennai where the shapes are oval or closely circular in 1744 for the first time the laws of the cricket are being made and according to that we can have two umpires to settle the disputes between the both the parties the stumps should have 22 inches and the bails between these two are of 6 inches the ball is should have 5 to 6 ounces 
and the size of the bat is not yet fixed. So these are the base rules which makes cricket a very different game from the existing games. A game which can be played for nearly as long as 5 days but you don't find anyone winning over the match. They fight for the victory but no one is victorious. When even in the football the most popular game but it can be decided less than 90 minutes. But here you work for nearly 100 to 120 hours but you don't find any person or any party victorious. So that is another rare and special feature or unique feature of the game cricket. Now let's find out. First, when was the cricket club formed? Now, the first cricket club was established in 1760 at Hambledon. And the next cricket club was established as Maryland Cricket Club in 1787. These were the first cricket clubs established to know the regulations of the cricket rules. So, in 1787, the first cricket regulation was published by the Maryland Cricket Club. It has made certain specifications. You can see from 1760s to 1770s, many changes have occurred in the game of cricket. That is, till the time the ball was rolled down on the ground. But then it has made it that over the air, the ball has to be thrown in the air. And the immediate result was the bat shape has been changed. Earlier, the bat was curved in shape, which allows at the bottom when the ball is grounded, it gets connected. But now, as it is not grounded and it is thrown in the air, the batsman has to look at the timing and the pitch and he has to maintain that shot. He has to beat the ball. So the bat has been changed to a flat one and the sizes were also fixed. The ball was made fixed confined to five and a half to five three by fourth ounces while the bat width for three to four inches. And moving on further, in 1774, for the first time, first leg before law has been introduced where you cannot place your leg before the wickets. That's now known as leg before the wicket or LBW in short. In 1780, we have seen the first match which has been played for three days and the ball also, six seam ball was introduced in this year. It was only in 19th century, most of the security equipments are being added to the game. That is like gloves, pads. A boundaries were fixed and also around the arm bowling has become legal. So now we can observe cricket as a pre-industrial sport which has got its changes occurring during the industrial revolution period and also after the industrial revolution period in the 18th century and in the 19th century. So the story of cricket connects us from the prehistoric times or sorry from the pre-industrial times and to the modern day history. So it gives us a clear picture along with the game what was the condition of the society at that time during the industrial revolution and after the industrial revolution also. Now there was no time limit because it was initially started in the rural areas of England where they don't have any specific time limits for the game. They usually have only one rule that is the team has to be bowled out twice not once. So it may take five days, it may take seven days. So it went on like that. But as the time passed on, the rules were brought into place. Rules were made. Because the modern factories, in rural areas, we don't have any factories or any time bound restrictions. But when it comes to the towns, in the modern towns, we have factories and where the workers are paid according to their hourly basis of work. And now, if you look at the other games, which are having its link with the pre-industrial time that is football or hockey have the time limit basing on the time limit so which can compensate or equate with the working hours of those people who are working in the factories in their leisure time they can come and watch it they can come and play it like that the time bound nature has to be necessary so then there came a necessity for that but when we look at the rural background of the cricket that is it is played by the countrymen and they used to play in the public lands which are unfenced and they used to have the public also sitting around with them. When the ball is hit, it goes on into the very boundary lays or at the edges. So there is even today also, there is no exact length how much a boundary should be from the bat to the boundary line. Because it is written in the laws that the umpire will decide 
with the agreement of both the captains about the boundaries so if the both the captains are agreeing then the empire doesn't have any problem then the boundaries are fixed so there is no specific length that has to be specified that this much distance only the boundary should be there it depends on the agreement between both the captains even today and rural england origins even today we find in cricket the rural england origins that is bat and ball bat is even today made with hand even with the ball also they have not used or added to get the manufactured products by the industries but earlier the bat is to be made with a single piece of wood now it is made into two pieces like a blade and a handle blade is generally made with a willow tree while the handle is made with the cane tree what they get from there and ball is made with the hands it is made up of cork twine like that so this all shows that it is in the still in the origins of the rural background once dennis lelly who is a australian cricket player tried to bat which is made up of aluminum for a entire innings but this is just to outlaw the idea that with the modern technology or in the industrial product also we can try to play the game which he want to prove that he cannot play the game at all next coming to the protective equipment the technology has given more advancement regarding to the protective equipment leaving the bat ball stumps or wickets the pads the gloves the helmets the pads are now we have very nice pads which are filled with wool all these things and we also have gloves which are very soft in nature fine clothing and all then helmets which are made with light weight metals and all these things these added to the protective equipment but not to the main things like bat and ball cricket and the connection with the england cricket and the victorian england the nature of the society of england has been clearly shown when the organization of the game happened that is the rich people who used to play the game for pleasure are known as amateurs these amateurs play for pleasure and they don't earn any income because there is no much income from the game so they are which they are not interested and they are also known as gentlemen the people those who play for pleasure and who are basically rich are known as gentlemen they are also known as amateurs and they would like to prefer to bat first and they always like batting because the hard and the tough part of the game that is bowling running fast bowling all this is given to the poor who for them it is a seasonal employment those are professionals who get a gate money as a subscription amount for them for playing and these people are later known as players they are forced or made to bowl this game is played seasonally that to these professionals used to work in the mines and in winter when it is an off season for them during that time the game is played so that's why it provides a seasonal employment and it's not a full time employment game for us and later and most of the times if you observe the cricket rules and regulations they all are in favor of the batsman that is not because the batsman is really worth enough but it is the gentlemen who are playing the cricket are mostly they prefer to bat all the benefit of doubts are in favor of the batsman only and let if you look at the captains also it is a with the test match it is or the uh, village match or it is between the national matches any test matches or any teams mostly the captains are the white or the rich people or the gentlemen only only in 1930s we have seen len hutton who led the yorkshire team he was a batsman and he was not a gentleman he was a professional he led the team for the first time in the history of indian cricket indian test cricket specifically so this is how the game initially started in england the rich used to play for time pass or leisure or pleasure while the poor used to play to earn some income that too when they don't have any income coming from their regular occupation because there they have uh, off the work so they need to do something to earn income so that's why those people who play for pleasure are known as gentlemen or amateurs those who play for 
payment are known as players or professionals it is often said that the battle of waterloo was won on the fields of eton eton is one of the prestigious schools because school boys were well trained in the public schools and even every value values are taught for the boys in the schools especially for the english the eton is one of the famous schools in british it is a school which is established for the english boys to pursue their career in military civil services and church which were the great institutions of the imperial england so in order to cultivate to them the thomas arnold the, the rugby school headmaster has recognized that the sports like cricket and rugby are not just only for the games that have to be played but through which we can also teach the students the discipline hierarchy the skills the code of honor and leadership discipline how discipline you have to be to be successful how organized and one after the other how you have to perform the hierarchy who should be given the top priority what should be done first everything in the hierarchy and skills what how to manage your emotions properly code of honors how to respect the others though you are not winning how you have to respect the others even if you win how you should not show that proud nature and leadership leading the team from the front if there are any crisis taking the initiative and going ahead so all these can be thought through the games like cricket and rugby this was the main idea of thomas arnold the rugby school headmaster at that time the napoleonic wars in the napoleonic wars the major contribution was made by the iron works of scotland wales and the mills of lancashire and the financial houses of the london city and but it was the english who led it and made the britain the greatest power the point underlying point in making this is that the english believed that the superior quality the superior nature and the way they led it from the front these all they learned because they played the gentlemanly games like cricket in their school in their public schools when they were studying they inculcated that habits and that values with them so that's why they started to believe that cricket has taught us how to balance how to tip the balance with them so that can manage and win the wars so it has to be inculcated when we are young that's what they started to believe and they learned it because they played cricket they played rugby in their public schools now the spread of the cricket the cricket was not spread so widely like hockey or the other games football which were very popular and they are internationally played this cricket was restricted only to the colonial countries where the white settlers tried to play the game like in australia zimbabwe west indies or the people those who tried to copy their colonial masters like in india like this the game started to spread only in the regions which were once dominated by the britishers those who have the settlers of the white started to feel that it is the racial superiority to play the game they feel that they are superior that is the reason why they are playing the game and most of the times it is not allowed for the indians and the west indies people or the afro caribbeans not to participate in the game they were discouraged always when the game was played by them because of their racial superior attitude and moving on further in 19th century only the first non white man's club of cricket was formed and in that also the light skinned people only were allowed that is mulattoes and later it was lot of unofficial cricket was played in the beaches of caribbean in the parks of caribbean and till 1930s the cricket clubs were dominated by the whites now the spread of cricket was initially restricted by the whites which they discouraged the afro caribbean players but still it is very popular though it was exclusively only for the whites it was very popular in the west indies country and as the time passed on forbes bumham and eric williams who were the national leaders 
who protested against the domination of the whites or the Britishers, they started to feel that playing cricket game and winning it is as a self-respect and increasing the international standing of their lives. When they, in 1950, West Indies versus England defeated the England team and this was celebrated as a national victory for the first time because this victory made them equal with the white men's game and also it did not represent only one dominion it represented various dominions and it also gave chance for the leading for the white player here in 1950 and in 1960 they gave opportunity for the first black player who led named Frank Worrell led the test team and he was again victorious here so now if you look at the international scenario the team like West Indies represents various dominions which was an unsuccessful attempts made to unite the West Indians so here though the British has discouraged the West Indies people to not to play the cricket but it was very popular game in West Indies and the Caribbean islands and which gave a chance for the people the national leaders who are fighting against the colonialism consider that when we play cricket it is not only giving a chance for us to get equality opportunity but also enhancing the international standard for all of our lives and it was celebrated as a national victory when West Indies defeated the England in 1950 for the first time they started to feel that they are also equal to the whites so there is no discrimination at all and in 1960 West Indies was led by the first black player named as Frank Worrell and now also West Indies represents many different dominions even in the international scenario the cricket team West Indies defends many other dominions where many unsuccessful attempts were made to unite the West Indians the spread of cricket as we discussed how did cricket spread in India moving on into the details the cricket fans whenever they watch any match locally like between Madras and between Bhopal or between Chennai and between Bengaluru or any other local matches they take any of the side the spectac the spectators will be very less but when it comes to a match between India and Australia all the regional people together watch India as one set they take the side of India irrespective of they belong to Bengaluru or they belong to Chennai they belong to Mumbai or they belong to Delhi wherever they are they all watch with great enthusiasm towards the side of India and expect and hope that India should win the match so how was the teams organized before the national team came into existence because till 1932 we don't have an organized team or national teams or the regional teams so in order to know about these we need to again turn back the pages into the history and find out how did the cricket develop in India how it got initially obstacles from the white people and later how did they come forward how did it got transformed today what is the position of Indian cricket we'll find out now. in 1721 the English sailors for their recreational purpose first started to play cricket in our country in Campbell it was the Calcutta Cricket Club which was the first cricket club established in India and this was only for the British military men and civil servants it was exclusively only for the white men no Indians are allowed or entertained to practice and they initially started this game to escape from the discomfortness strangeness and danger of being in a new place like India where they are foreigners so initially the game was started to relieve themselves from the feeling of discomfort danger and also strangeness in that place and they also consider that Indians have no talent to play this game so they have not given any chance for the Indians to play this game so initially they were finding very difficult to establish their own ground also let us see how it was the first place where the cr cricket was practiced was at Bombay and the first community of Indians who got themselves westernized were the Zoroastrians that is the Parsis 
after they got westernized and they want to be like the white as they are very closely connected with the white people through their business activities so they were ready to take up or play the game so they started the orient cricket club in 1848 at bombay so they want a playground to play which was actually a public place which was denied for them to play the whites had their own gymkhana and they objected that they will not allow these people to play the indians gave a complaint against them because of the polo holes whatever they keep for the polo game it has become very difficult and cannot be played when it was repaired they were not allowed to pay they were not allowed to play the game at all so the angry and the frustrated parsis went out and built their own own ground and they started to practice it they used to get the funds from the parsi businessmen like tatas and the wadias who always used to support them financially and moving on further they had a happy ending though initially they found it very difficult to get the permissions to have the ground to play all these were objected by the whites as far as possible so in 1889 when uh, 1885 the congress was formed initially just after 4 years when the uh, orient cricket club batted or played a match with the bombay jinkana they were able to defeat the white people and it was a great victory and it gave a nice start off for the zoroastrian community or the parsi community to take the game deeper into the indian set but still the game was organized on the lines of race and religion how racism and religion entered into the cricket we will find out now dada bhai noroji was one of the young leader who initially participated in the game planning of cricket who was actually well belonging to the parsi community he also was one of the team member who played against the bombay jinkana of the whites in the first match when they defeated the whites the bombay jinkana the orient cricket club defeated bombay jinkana now moving on further the clubs were initially organized on the basis of religion in 1890s they were clubs based on hindus muslims because the britishers considered india not as a nation but they considered it as a collection of caste system collection of the different castes different races people and different religious people and they do not want them to be like this so they took the credit of unifying the indian subcontinent for name sake they officially encouraged the divisive policy on a very large scale they always encouraged anyone who comes with an intention of a religious motto they will give an encouragement to that like for example when the application was given to the presidency of bombay asking for a hindu jinkana club or a islam jinkana club the governor said that i cannot refuse it because i i can do only when there is a national jinkana club established so till that time i have to accept any hindu jinkana club or a islam jinkana club like that it shows that the colonial state always favored towards the divisive policies and moving ahead further they always guided the country on the communal and the racial lines similar attitude was also shown when the encouragement came for the grounds clubs or even for the cricket the initial stages it was like this today we have the ranji trophy matches which are not run on religious lines but which are run on the national geographical lines or the regional states which play for the ranji trophies and earlier it was quadrangular which means we have the europeans we have the parsi team we have the hindu team and we have the muslim team playing the cricket initially so we have only now the britishers then we have the parsis who are rich businessmen the hindus can play the muslims can play then what about the rest the christians the sikhs the jains all these are left out so adding on that the rest of india was added and another team we got now the quadrangular became a pentangular tournament like now we have five teams earlier we had only four teams but now we have five teams and one example of the fifth team vijay hazare who was a christian played on the behalf of the rest of the indian community that is indian christians team so this gives an example for us that how on the basis of religion the cricket clubs were established by 1930s and 1940s the attitude or these quadrangular teams or the pentangular teams basing on the religions like europeans the parsis then the hindus the christians the islam or the muslim people 
went on for severe criticism when S.A. Brelvi, the Bombay Chronicle chief editor, criticized this. Later, it was also criticized by radio commentator A.F.S. Talir Khan and even Mahatma Gandhi gave a strong message that when all the nationalists are trying to unite India, how can the first class game can organize on the lines of religion basis? So really it is hurting the national sentiments. So later it was escalated. The Ranji Trophy was established. The first class Ranji Trophy championship was established. But it was built on the rocks of the British's divisive policy. Today whatever we are seeing the pentangular or the quadrangular teams, these all are encouraged by the Britishers. They were built on the British's colonial state. So it has become very difficult until India got, gets its independence. When the British Raj came to end, only the colonial tournaments of these quadrangular and the pentangular teams came to end and got replaced with the national and the state teams, not on the lines of religion, but on the lines of geographical backgrounds. The modern transformation of the game. Now we will see how India got entered into the international arena. Today, the cricket is known for test matches or the one-day internationals. In short forms, it is known as tests or ODIs, the one-day international games which are played for a stipulated time with the test matches are played for nearly five days. Now, CK Naidu, Palavankar Vithal and Palavankar Balu, these three are the famous personalities who were very popular in the first team which played cricket. Among these three also, Mr. CK Naidu is very, very famous. Why he is very famous when compared to all his contemporaries? Because he played against England in the first test match, that is in 1932, where the first cricket captain for the test cricket team, he was the first captain that made him to get a remarkable place in the Indian history of cricket. Now, 15 years before India got its independence only, Indian cricket team entered into the world cricket. But initially from 1877 onwards, the countries which are ruled by the Britishers, known as the British Empire, used to conduct matches between different regions of the same British domain. That is like the English team, the Australians, the Australians were also the white settlers and then the West Indies, a combination of the Caribbean islands all formed a team of the West Indies team. Then from India, who are the non-white people also used to play the game. Like this, before India got its independence, Indian cricket team entered into the British land and started to play cricket till the World War II has got initiated. Decolonization and the sport. Now we can discuss how after India gets its independence, the control of the Britishers was been lost not only in India. It continued for a decade. Many parts which were initially controlled by the Britishers for many years lost their control after the Second World War and each country started to turn as an independent nation. And that we can find here. So that reduced the influence of the Britishers in the field of politics, economics, international affairs, games, sports and everything. So it did not take initially as soon as they got independent. It took a couple of years for them to get off from the influence of the Britishers. The ICC was largely known as the Imperial Cricket Conference only in 1965 that got renamed as International Cricket Conference. This shows like how long the influence of the Britishers continued or the gentlemen's game. And in 1989 also we can understand that the England and Australia always had a veto power status in International Cricket Conference or the Imperial Cricket Conference which came to be called off in 1989 and that has scrapped off the influence of the English as well as the Australian that is the white settlers staying in Australia. Even in 1950s and 60s also the colonial flavor we can find here when the South Africa is following the racial discrimination on an extreme height the apartheid policy but still the countries like England, Commonwealth countries, Australia and New Zealand like to play the matches with them went on tours to South Africa and continued the game spirit with them. The countries like India, Pakistan and West Indies who suffered the colonial problems, who saw the racial discrimination along with them. So they decided that we will not play any games with South Africa. It is only after a huge pressure has come up politically from the newly independent states 
of Asia and Africa. Then only ICC reacted over that and banned the tours in 1970 to South Africa till it ends the apartheid policy. So this we can understand that the influence of the Britishers continued for many years over the newly independent countries also while they are playing the game. Commerce, media and cricket. The present day how is the game of cricket? We will see how we, cricket became so popular in the world. It was the year of 1970s when the gentleman's game got transformed rapidly. New changes were welcomed. In 1971, the first one day international game was organized between England versus Australia. And later, the World Cup, first World Cup, which was led successfully completed in 1975. And in 1977, that marked the 100 years of Test cricket. Now, moving ahead, cricket was not so popular till 1977. It was just a game restricted to some of the British colonial, colonial countries which became recently independent. It was not the player, it was not the cricket administrator who made it very popular. It is a true businessman who made this game as a global market scenario. That man is Kerry Parker, the Australian television tycoon who made contract with nearly 51 world-class cricket players against the interest of the national boards for two years. He was not liked by any of the world boards, but he made a circus of the series of tournaments which were made cricket very attractive to the audience. He organized many international matches in the two years and which gave a wide coverage to the people through the television channels, through his channels. So like that, he discovered the potential of making money from the game of cricket. So how did he make money? He made money first he signed the contracts with them. Later, he conducted many matches. These matches are telecasted through the television channels. And these television channels will in turn get money from the companies who are ready to give their advertisements through the air commercials. So now for the players, they are best paid. For the companies, they are paid. For the channels, they are paid. And the players are well played, played and paid. And also, they are very popular among the masses of the country because they are, can be seen lively and they have huge number of fan following now. They are not only paid for the game, but also whenever they do any air commercials, they are also played for that. So it started to give an economy which is raising more than many countries economies. So like that, Kerry Parker had a crucial role who discovered that in this we have the potential through which we can make huge amount of money and he also made the new rules for the game very interesting like colorful dresses making them to have protective helmets field restrictions playing the game during the daytime and also nighttime under the lights so these all aspects made it very attractive for the audience and now we can see the shift of this initially it was only seen in the regions where it was played now because of the wide connectivity of the satellite networks now the television channels are giving it live across the whole world. So when a game is played in Sydney, it can be watched easily by sitting at your home in Surat. So it has got a global market now. So this global market has initiated a grand success of the game of cricket. Earlier it was confined only under the control of the Britishers. But now after the decolonization, the effect or the influence of the British has started to break up completely. And the attention earlier it was only confined to the British and the Australian people. As now India has been having more number of viewers, the attention moved towards the South Asian region and the head office of ICC, International Cricket Conference, has been relocated from London to Dubai, which is a tax-free state. So this also shows for us the influence of the Britishers slowly got degraded and now it is not only the game of the whites but it is a game of a millions of people who watch it live as we discussed the icc office has been shifted from london to tax-free state of dubai the center of gravity shifted from the london region from the britishers and the australian people towards the southeastern continent of asia
that is the anglo australian innovations are been replaced or added up with the innovations which have come from india sri lanka and pakistan the pakistan people and the indian people have brought two new innovations in bowling that is the dusra and the reverse swing dusra is to counter the batsman with a heavy bat with the fingers making them to spin so it's very difficult to handle it at the same time the reverse swing this reverse swing is to make the ball on a dusty and an unresponsive wicket to swing it over to the batsman so like that they started to innovate and this was initially looked with a lot of suspicion by the britishers and the australian players because it has been very difficult for them to handle the situation and they started to say that this is an illegal and this cannot be interpreted the cricket laws cannot be changed as per your convenience but the as a time came it started to be argued that now it is not the time to fix according to the situations of the britishers grounds or according to the australian grounds it is the game is played all over asia so all over the world when the game is played a game cannot be restricted or rules cannot be in place where considering only one region or one particular place so slowly their influence started to get reduced and the influence or the attention of the indians sri lankans australians west indies players started to grow up this shows the decolonization also left the impact that now the british have no control or the icc where the others have larger control over that and 150 years ago the parsi team could not find any place to play the game today the indian cricket team is the most famous team among the world cricket and world is a stage for them to play they have immense potential they are the high paid cricket players in the world earlier they were gentlemen which was been replaced with the high paid professionals and today the most popular team is indian cricket team the most popular players are indian cricket players india also hosts the ipl matches like that of the australian ta- television tycoon pally parker did that one so now some years before it was very difficult for us to think how indian cricket would be in future but today indian cricket is the most viewed matches and india has a most number of fan following all over the world now in this lesson we have seen the main underlying story of history or the business of history that is the sense of change over the time is a story of our history and here we have looked cricket as a sport before india is independent and after india got independence during the colonial rule during the colonial period and later on how the changes have come after the colonial period that is the post colonial era so like this initially indians struggled a lot to get a game, ground to play their game they were not encouraged to play they were divided on the lines of religions but today indian national team has lifted up the world cup nearly two times and indian national team is the most famous team among all the other teams in the cricket world